give honor to our, my pastor of this house um, and thank her for allowing us to have this class here. Um, if someone would stand up and lead us in prayer before we get started. Pastor, you want to lead us in prayer? Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, praise you, honor you, love you, Father God. We bow down before you. We just uh, commit this time, Father God, of worship, uh, this deliverance class to you, Father God. We just ask that you lead us, guide us, direct us, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of our lives. We love you, Father. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Father God, we just thank you that all that shall be done here, Father God, and this time will be for your glory. To you be the glory, Father God, for all the things you have done in the past, for what you are doing right now, and what you shall do in the future, Father God, on behalf of this ministry. We just worship you and praise you and honor you for it, Father God. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I'd like to ask you right now that you decrease me and increase yourself within me, Lord, that you have your way. Thank everybody who came out. Um, I'm going to kind of um, recap, because this is the second class that we've had, so I'm going to recap so I can catch you, everybody who's here up on what we, uh, what we had already covered. Um, for those who are not into deliverance, um, deliverance is... It's really mandatory in, 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 in the day of the church now because a lot of people have members and other people affiliated in the church and they have spirits and they have demons. These spirits will wander around into your church and before you know it, they're all over the place. So it's very important that you can identify the spirits, that you know the spirits, and that you are equipped to cast them out when the time comes. Um, no one's saying that you need to go and put them out on front street, you know, <laughs> and put everybody out on blast. But if you see the spirit, you know, call that person to the side and then you can deal with it then. In order to be in deliverance, we must live a life of holiness. It, we must be holy. There must be nothing that's inside of us that will stop us from being delivered. Because you can't cast nothing out that you have in yourself. So you, can, you, can't, you, you, just, you just can't do it. It's impossible. To lay your hands on somebody and try to cast something out, and you got it yourself. Amen. So how you, he, the devil gonna look at you? Tell me how you gonna cast me out? I mean you too. It's impossible. So you must, you must live a life of holiness. Not only that, in deliverance, you must live a life of fasting and praying, fasting and praying, so you could be led by the Holy Spirit to tell you what it is that you need to do. If you walk into a church or if you're in somebody's home or whatever, the Holy Spirit will tell you what spirits that are dwelling in that place. Um, and you need to fast and pray on these things, especially if you're in leadership or if you're in some type of authority in a church setting, you need to be able to um, do these things yourself because a lot of churches don't have prophets and stuff like that. They don't have the fivefold, which is necessary in church days now. You need to have the fivefold ministry. You need to have the prophets in place so they can warn off everything that's going on and let you know what's going on because pastors and uh, apostles sometimes you be so busy that you can't see everything. So you need your other your other four ministries, you need your ministers, you need your prophets, you need your evangelists, you need your evangelists to, to bring up your church. A lot of times they have the pastors in the position and the apostles in the position where they are the ones that are going out doing it. That's the job of the evangelist. Evangelists, get on your post, do your job, bring them in. And if your evangelists are trained in deliverance, you when you when they when they come in, they're gonna be alright because your 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 evangelist done did that. When you have a deliverance, it's best to have a team. At least a team of four, um, and all of them need to be trained in deliverance, where they can where they can recognize the spirits. Um, you know, because you got one that's casting them out. While you casting them out, the other ones are praying and discerning what other spirits that they see. And they, you know, so you may see people in deliverance going, you know, going to one another, you know, whispering in each other's ear. That's because they're relaying to them what God is telling them. Because God tells us things in parts. He may tell you something that He hasn't told me. But if we're all working together and we're all on one accord and we're all fasted up and prayed up, then we will all be on that same accord. 
And the next thing, and it says right here, it says that um, in Matthew, I'm going to give you a scripture, Matthew 10 and 1. It says that when he had called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. A lot of people don't know that that's us. That's us. We are disciples. We are ambassadors for Christ. The same authority that the disciples walked in then, we walk in now. We walk in those same authorities right now, and we can do the same things that they was doing then. But it's a, we have to believe in it. We have to trust that God is using us in that manner, and we have to know what we know. You just have to know what you know what you know. You know, there's times when a lot of people that are in deliverance will say stuff like, um, they want to see you bent over a trash can. If your power is powerful enough and your belief and your faith is enough, I can just look at you and say, come out. You don't even know how to say that prayer of you, but it done came out. And because I believe that it is so, that demon is gone. Now, you can do deliverance on a person that's not really ready to be delivered, whose mouth is saying I'm ready to be delivered to be delivered, but on the inside they're really not ready to be, to, to be delivered. Those people you're going to have a hard time with. Those people I would just, okay, when you're really ready to be delivered, you let me know. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to sit here and fight you to get rid of your demons. If you want to hold on to your demons, then you hold on to them. I'm not going to fight you to, to get rid of some stuff. That doesn't, you know, that that's, no. God wants us all to be free. He wants every last one of us to be free. Free. Yes. We can put our own selves in bondage with our mouth. Our mouth is the most powerful thing. The most powerful, powerful thing. And we speak some of the things that we speak to each other and the way that we speak about each other and the things that we speak over each other can put us into bondage. And people don't realize that. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. He said that for a reason, because you need to be mindful of what you say, especially when you're speaking over God's people, because you can put them into bondage. You can put them into bondage, and then they can put this up. They're already putting this up. Lord, you find those people saying, Lord, I just can't win. You know what? You, you sure ain't going to win, because you just spoke that over your life. You, you're not. You, you're speaking that. In a daily, we do these things because we're so used to speaking these things that we don't have a problem with it. We don't know that it, it, that it is a problem to speak in that manner. Oh, uh, nothing, nothing good ever happens to me. Okay, nothing good's gonna happen to you because you just spoke that. You just put that out into the atmosphere. Now you done gave Satan room to come and swoop that on up, and now he's now he's surrounding you with nothing good is ever gonna happen to you. But when you start speaking things out of your mouth and speaking things into your existence, then you will see the manifestations of the Lord. Then you will see his manifestations start to turn things around because God is not a forceful God. He's only going to do it when you're willing and when you're a willing vessel. When you start speaking the things of his word and using his word back at him, he is just to show you. And he is just to do what he says he's doing, what he's going to do. And then it's again another scripture, Matthew 6 and 7. It says, And he called unto him those twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. It's best when you go out to go out in twos. If you can go out in threes, go out in threes, because you have the one who's going to witness. You have the one who's going to pray. And you have the other one who's discerning of the spirits. You have to be on one accord. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right now. <laughs> so you see, deliverance, deliverance is a very important, 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 important part of being in the ministry. Because you can be in the ministry, and a lot of people mistake the fact that I'm saved in it. You can still get spirits whether you're saved or not, because there are spirits that attach themselves to you. If you embrace somebody who has an unclean spirit, you can go home with that unclean spirit and go home and wonder why your house is in turmoil and why you up in there tripping because you done brought that spirit home with you. And if you're not discerning enough to know the spirit, then, oh, wait a minute, I think that, 
Okay, and now you got to go into prayer. Now you got to go into prayer to get that thing off you because you can deliver yourself. You don't need to have somebody all the time to come and lay their hands on you to deliver you. You are able to deliver yourself, but you must be taught in the way of deliverance. And you also have to believe that you have the same authority that the disciples have. The same authority you have to, you must believe. I believe it. I believe if I look at somebody and just say, you, you better, you better come out. I believe it's gone. You know what I mean? But I'm not a forceful person where I would put somebody on, you know, I'll, oh, they got this, I'm finna go ahead and lay hands on them. No, that's out of order. I'm not gonna do it like that. Um, because sometimes people don't even recognize that they have spirits. They are so accustomed to that, that they believe that that's just, how I am. That's just that's just me. That's just how I am. Okay, so you now you have given the devil more authority to continue tormenting you. And a lot of people don't believe that children can have spirits. It's that yeah, children can have spirits. Children can have spirits, but children don't know how to voice what they're going through or what's tormenting them. When you have children waking up in the middle of the night screaming, those are night terrors, that's demons messing with them. Okay, and um, they don't know, but if you got a praying mother and a father that's aware of these demons and these spirits, then they can pray and lay hands on their own child. They don't got to wait, I'm gonna bring you to church on Sunday and let the pastor lay hands on you. No, you better get in there and lay hands on your own child and get to praying over him just as well as you pray over anything else. The same way you can pray when you were in church, the same way you can pray for yourself. If you have that same kind of faith, and you need to have that same kind, I have that same kind of faith. They, 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 demons don't mess with me. They don't mess with me, period. I'm not trying to play. I know I'm a child of God. I know who I am. If you don't know who you are, yes, he will buffer at you. Yes, he will come at you. And some of the door openers, the door openers that will allow him to come in and buffer at you is unmarried sex is one of the biggest ones. When you're having premarital sex, you're not having sex. Not only are you committing soul ties, you are you are opening the door for him to enter in. And when he comes in, it's different, different kinds of spirits that he can come into. Then the other one is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is also a big door opener to allow Satan to come in and have his way with you. Another door opener is hurt, pride. All these are door openers. These are spirits that we have to pick up. Nobody's telling, you know, you have to pick hurt, you have to pick hurt up. Somebody can say something to you, okay, all right, they said it. You brush that off. You don't involve, I'm hurt. Let me pick up hurt, I'm hurt. And now I'm gonna carry hurt around with me. Now you wanna carry hurt around with you because somebody said something that hurt you. Oh well, get over it. You'll be all right. You'll be okay. I'm not finna carry that spirit. Offense is another door opener. You offended me. Now I'm offended. I am not speaking to you. So now I got an R with my brother. The Bible says if you have an R with your brother, then lay it at the altar before you even come to him with your offering. So you have an R with your brother, but you still going up in there putting your money is no good. It's no good because you haven't made it right with your brother or your sister. You have to lay it down. Lay it down. I forgive you. Nobody's saying that you got to go out and hang out with him tomorrow, or you got to call him up and shoot the bobo with him. You ain't got to do it, but you must. Forgive him so your vessel can be clean for the Lord. You want your, it's not even, the forgiveness is not even for the other person. The forgiveness is for you to do what he wants for you to do. You can't, if you have all that stuff bottled up, that's a hindrance for God to come in and do what he wants. And there's so many people walk around with so many hindrances. Okay, great. That's a door opener because you hold on to that. He raped me, he abused me. Rape, hurt, all that. You can't, rape is the stronghold. And I'm gonna get into strongholds as we go on into, into, the, uh, into the class. Okay, strongholds is the, is the one that, that, that's the main one that's sitting here and he'll send out that one to torment you. He'll send out this one to torment you while he just sits back like this here. Nobody knows he's there. So you have to cast out all those ones that he send out and then you attack him. Then you go after him and chop his head off. That's what you do to him. 
Then it's like, before, before you can be in deliverance, like I said, you must be free yourself. You have to be free of everything. You have to lay everything down. Yeah, granted you will make mistakes, okay, but you are to repent for those mistakes Cleanse yourself, at least cleanse yourself, go on a fast and make sure you're cleansed before you start going back out there trying to lay hands on somebody. If I, and I'm just going to use me as an example because I can't use anybody else, I'll use me. If I've done something that I know that was not right in the eyes of the Lord, I'm going to repent. Not only will I repent, I will not step my foot into the Lord's house knowing what I've done and not make that right. I need to get right with him first. I need to make sure me and him, me and him's here. We cool. We we back, we, we straight dad, we good. You know I ain't mean that. You know what I'm saying? Me and him, because I, I have a relationship with him. And everybody needs to have a relationship with God. We have to have one. We have to be able to talk to him. Just like I would talk to you, Pastor. Just like I would talk to you, Minister. Just like I would talk to you, Pastor. We need to take that time and just sit down and look, you know what I'm saying? This is what this is what it is. You know, what 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 do you want me to do? But we always find ourselves doing what we want to do. And that's where another door opens. You done opened up another door. Because we're not in his vein. We always, always, always have to be in the vein of the Lord. Like this morning, when I got up and I knew I was coming here to do this class, I not once turned on the TV. Period. TV's off. Because the TV is going to cloud what he downpoured into me during the night. Because he knew that I was coming to deliver his word. So he's going to downpour whatever it is that he wants to get out to his people. And I'm very obedient to what it is that he wants. In your hands, I gave you some confessions. And on that it says, um, it says what uh, we must understand. And I put, you see how I said it, like I'm hollering at you. We must understand the power of our words. You must understand that. And I wrote down some confessions that, you know, because I didn't know who would be here, but in case there was some who didn't have what they needed, I was going to get them ready. So, we, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all we all one with God, but if you don't mind, I would just like to do these confessions. Um, the confessions, you have, must understand that what you confess out your mouth, just like it says that you have to um, confess that Jesus is Lord, is the Lord over your life, he's your Lord and Savior, and you will receive salvation. Those same way that you say those confessions is the same way that you confess your daily walk with God, your daily life, your daily living. The things that come out of your mouth should be godly things. The things that you speak over yourself should be godly things. The things that you speak over your brother should be godly things. The things that you speak over your neighbor across the street, even though you might not can get along with them, but you just don't speak. I speak happiness and prosperity over their life. I speak goodness into their life. I speak that they're going to come in to the things of God. You just speak good things over them. So what you confess. Now, the first confession says, I confess by his stripes that I am healed. Now, me, I believe that. And I believe that I am walking and I possess the healing of the Father because I don't get sick. I believe that. I, I believe that with every being. If there's something aching me, I believe in my body that he's going to heal me. I'm not finna walk in no, um, in no sicknesses. And it says, the son has made me free. That's a confession. That's another confession. And now you possess absolute freedom because you have confessed that out of your mouth and you confessed it into the air and you have confessed God's word. You have spoken his word. He is just to give that to you. Number uh, number uh, number th number four says, I confess the love of God is shed abroad in my in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Now I possess the ability to love all all of God's people, every last one of them. I possess I possess that ability because I spoke that out and I'm, I'm repeating God's words back to himself because as you can see that's Proverbs 28 and 1 that's his word these are his words that I'm speaking back to him in a confession over my life I confess that he will never leave me nor forsake me that's Hebrews 13 5 and 6 that means that I possess the presence
presence of the Lord everywhere I go. Every day, everywhere I go, he's with me because I've made these confessions. Now, I gave you these confessions because, you, you know, you can say them to yourself. You can say them over your children. But as it says on the, end, on the end of that page, it says, Under, in order for any of these things to be so, you must believe it. You must live it. And you must, above all things, have faith in the word of God. You have to have the faith that God has given us. And I want to go on to something. Uh, I'm gonna switch, switch, switch it up just a little bit here. And I just want you to um, to know. Okay, the attributes of God. This is we're gonna get into how you can discern things. The, everyone knows the attributes of God. The attributes of God is the Spirit, the whole, uh, the holiness that uh, He has that He never, never did. He never touched. That He's never been touched by sin. Eternal, eternal. He has always existed. Infinite without limits expect, except when he is limited himself by his word. Omnia, that means he's everywhere. So every, everybody is aware of his, his attributes. Now, we're going to flip it over. Now, we know the devil is a liar. Okay? Now, so if you are walking around here and always lying, that means you got the spirit, you have a lying spirit that can be cast out. You can cast out by rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay, you can cast that spirit, but that's another spirit that we have in our because that, that's one of my, my team members. Me and him are on a team of deliverance. And we have cast out some lies now, some lying spirits. If you're going to come on out of there now, you cast them out. Murder, that's the mur murder spirit, is the, mur the spirit of Pharaoh. That's the murder spirit. That is, has been hovering over Columbus for a while. But I, I, I believe and I hear the Lord saying that he's shifting that. He's shifting that, that spirit because a lot of pastors, apostles are, are, are hip to what, what, you know, what the devil's attack is. And it's that spirit of murder. He's got people murdering each other. He's got friends killing friends and children killing children. That's Pharaoh. That, that is not of God. The soul of discord. That means that we, uh, when you have stuff, you have somebody that's always trying to uh, come with confusion. That's always trying to make things. Uh, you, the spirit of confusion. He can be. He can get out of there too. He can get kick rocks, boulders, and bricks. Got to go, buddy. You got to come up out of here. Cutting. That's the one that's always. Oh, it's, you know, woe is me. You know, poor me. He's. He's playing on your emotions, on, on who you are. Like if I'm, oh, pastor, I'm just so, I'm just so, pastor. And, the, you know, most pastors have the heart for the people. So they're, oh, okay. But, you know, if they're not discerning, if they're discerning, devil, I see you, you better, you better go somewhere and sit down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So, and then there's wickedness. Then you just have to just, just, just plain wicked for no reason. Just wicked. Just wicked. Cowardliness. That's a person that's not going to come to you. He's not going to say nothing to you. He's going to say to everybody else. <laughs> Them's them busybodies. Always got something to say about something. Just <laughs> They're a coward because they won't come to you and say what they got to say. They're going to say it to everybody else for that other person can come say it while they sit in the background like that strong man and just watch everything that they cause going on. Then you have without principle. They have no principle. They're, he's a thief. He's a tempter who always trying to tempt you with different things. Now we know these are the attributes of the devil. If you are in leadership and you have a ministry or you are starting a ministry and you see these attributes, you know you fit to lay some hands on these people. Another thing, when you're doing deliverance, do not have your people coming up in a line where they're all touching one another. Because them spirits ain't doing nothing but jumping from one person to another person. You touch him, he done jumped over here. He ain't finna get me. Now he done jumped over here to this other person. You call your people up one at a time. They can come up, but you when you when they come up to you, they come by themselves. For you can deliver them. You know what I'm saying? If you have a team, then you got one over here with that team. You have one over here. They always come separate. Do not, do not. I've seen pastors come and put their hands on all of them. Come on here. Do you know these spirits? They, 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 they jump. They, they move. They, they, uh, the spirit ain't stupid. He don't want to go nowhere. He ain't trying to leave. How you finna kick me out there? I've been here for 
10 years. I try to go nowhere. He didn't want to go. He's going to refuse to go. So you cannot have other people standing around while you are trying to cast this spirit out. You have to do these people. And another thing that I find is very useful, that you can do one-on-one. -on -one. You know, a lot of people get embarrassed to come up there and for other people to know what kind of spirits and demons they got. You know what I mean? You said, you know, a you know, special day, you know, when you come on such and such a day, you call your team up, you know, you're free for this day or whatever, your team comes in, and you deal with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. A lot of people, when you're in a church setting, won't come up to the front knowing that they walk around with the spirit of fornication on them, knowing that they walk around with lust all over them, knowing that they walk around with these spirits, but they won't come up to the front because they don't want the rest of the members to know that they're walking in these spirits. I don't care. My God, I'm finna go on up to the front. Go and get that out of me. Go and get it. Go on, get him, get him, get him. I, matter of fact, I'll get him. Don't worry about it. I got this. I'll get him out myself. I'm not finna wait for nobody to get nothing out of me. I'm gonna get it. Tina gonna get him out. I'm gonna get him. The next thing I want you to um is that we have to trust the Lord. We have to trust in his word. We have to trust in what it is that he says. We have to believe and we have to stand on what it is that he says. What he says, his word says that he will never leave us, nor forsake us. He ain't going nowhere then. If he says by his stripes we are healed, we are healed then. This book, I wanted to introduce you to this book. This book right here, I would suggest that everyone grab this book. This book, you can heal yourself with this book. You can sit in your MLI. You can sit up in your house there. I mean, when I say he covers every prayer in here, he covers fornication, lust, uh, Everything is in here. You can sit in the privacy of your own home and say these prayers aloud so that they're out into the atmosphere as a confession and the Lord is hearing his words come back to him. He is just to cleanse you and clean you. I live by this book. I love this book. I will sit up and read this book on a regular basis. If I even think I took somebody, so I'm going in the book. What happened? Where that at? I'm going to find that page that will... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely back. Everything he prays, everything. everything he says up, he backs up the scripture. Backs up the scripture. So it's the word, it's the Lord's word coming back at you. Does anybody have any questions at this time? donations in the in the their offerings in the bucket. You know, I'm not going to say that to him because if I say that to him, he's not going to come back. But if you love your people the way God loves him, he, you're going to tell him. God chastises us, don't he? When we do something wrong, don't he chastise us? Okay then. It's, not, it's a matter of how you do it. As long as you do everything that you do, you have to do it in love. For me, it was hard. That's my stand up. That's my spiritual father right there. That's the one who who, who who used to tell me? That's my spiritual father right there. That's Pastor Jenkins. Okay. He used to tell me because who stayed in his office crying when I tried to minister to somebody and they would turn around and turn that on me as if I had done something wrong. And I would be in his office crying, to him, crying, snots and tears like a baby. And he would say to me, you know what, daughter? You, you, if you're going to minister, you have to learn that people will talk. People are going to say stuff. <laughs> they're, go they're just going to do it. They're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. And you sometimes can be kind of He was honest. Yeah. You sometimes can be kind of harsh. He, just, he had just picked me up. Come, you know, I just came on in. I'm still, you know, I'm still pierced up. Had piercings everywhere that you can name. And he, you know, said, you know, you have to, you might have to soften yourself a little bit. I'm going to change myself. I'm who I am. You know, God chose me this way. But no. He changed me. He, he changed me a lot. Um, that was me saying that. That was that was Tina, her. This, this one, that was her. That was saying that God chose me that way. Yeah, he chose me, but he molded me when he chose me. He was molding me because little by little, all those things that I said, this is me, was dropping off, was leaving, was, was fading away, was gone. And before I knew it, they was all gone. And I'm looking at it like, wow, when did all this happen? It just happened. Now I can speak to somebody in that love. 
Now they can say whatever they want to say as long as I know I spoke the truth and I said the word of God and I backed it up with the with his word, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Not only that, I will not, I will not, if God hasn't told me to do something, I will not do it. I, I just won't do it. And they, some, some leaders just, you just, you are disobedient. No, I'm not disobedient. I'm obedient to the Lord first and foremost. I am led by him and then you. So he comes first, so if his word and your word are bumping heads, I'm going to go with his word. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, Dad says something different. I can't, I can't do what you said. And I will, and I, I mean, I won't be disrespectful when I do it. I will do that too in love. But I am going to stand on the word of God because I know he has my best interest in heart. You'll find some that will take the gift that I have and utilize that gift for themselves. God is not going to use my, he's going to use my gift for him and that's what it's meant for. Go ahead, God, use me. Do what you want to do. But we all have to realize that we also have a part in all of this. Our part. We must do our part. And the, 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 our part is that the night is far spent in the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor. We have to put on that whole armor. We must put the whole one, all of it, everything. Put, yeah, 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 no, put it on. Put, put it all on. When you go, when I go up my house, I'm prayed up. Because you never know, you can go into the market, you can go into the store, and like I said, this, these spirits are all over, and, and our people are walking around and don't even know that they have them. And a lot of churches don't even deal with it. As long as you're sitting up, filling up in these chairs, and you are giving me your offerings, go on, you and your spirits sit down. How you doing today, Mr. Brown? Yeah, you know, Mr. Brown got about seven spirits in him. And talk about you, but they won't lay their hands on you and try to get them spirits out. The, 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 the next thing that I want to say, that when you, please, when you do get delivered, the most important is Luke 11, 24, and 6. And the word says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. And he saith, I will return unto the house which I came out. And when he comes, he findeth it swept clean. Meaning that when he, when he says finding it swept clean, don't mean that somebody went through with a room and swept it clean. Meaning that all your demons and all your spirits is gone in your house. This is your house. This is your temple. This is where the Holy Spirit dwells, right there. Whenever you get that in the inside of you, that's that Holy Spirit talking to you. He finds that it has been swept clean. Now he will enter in it and dwell there, and he will bring seven more, worse than him. Now can you imagine? You already was jacked up in the beginning. Now you're more jacked up because you got some more of them up in there. And they're going to come up in here and keep up house. Now you are worse off than you was. Now I say this to say, I say that to say this, that when you get delivered, fill yourself up with the word. Fill it up. Fill it up. Excuse me for a minute. I just, let me just go get it. Just a go and get it. Let me get you. I got you there. I got you here. You see this right here. This, this right here. When you get a television, it gives you a, a remote control, right? And the remote control shows you how to change all the channels. It might even come with a book that shows you everything about that TV and how that TV should operate. Here's our manual. You only need this one. It's the only manual you need. You don't need no other manual. You don't need no universal remote or, or none of that stuff. This is the only thing that you need that will help you stay free, stay out of bondage. Stay clean, stay holy, and live right. This shows you how he wants us to live, how we were purposed to live, how we will live that is pleasing in his eyes. And when we don't live this way, that's when we get jacked up. That's when we get all the, the spirits and all the demons because we ain't doing what we're supposed to do in the first place. If we were just 
do this. How hard is it to get up in the daytime or when you get up before you start your day and just open it anywhere? Because anywhere you open it to is going to pertain to something that he wants you to do with your life. Go ahead and read that. That'll be your word for the day. That'll be getting rid of something that you probably didn't know was in there, but because you read that word, it's going to hit it. And when it hits it, you'll know, oh, oh, that, that hit something right there. You might be a little late because you're like, wait a minute, that hit something. Let me see what else that say. And then you read something else. But how hard is it to read that or at night when you're not doing anything? You know, most of the time, I spend my time a lot of times watching TV, and I, and I kick myself for that because I, the time that I'm spending watching TV, I can be sitting here keeping myself right with the Lord. The more we keep ourselves right with the Lord, the more, the more we will be free. The more that we are kind and loving to one another, they will be free. The light from us is what will bring them. The light from us will be like, wow, you know, I want to I be like that. That's how I want. I don't know what she's doing or what she, but, but I want to be like that. And I want to be like the Lord. I want to be like him. I want to be like Jesus. I promise you I want to be like Jesus. I want to live my life that way. I want to love the way that he loved. I want to treat his people the way that he treated his people. I want to do all of that. But I know that there are some there are some imperfections, but I am working on all of those imperfections for that I can be that shining light that God wants me to be. And in closing, I just want to say that to be free, you can free yourself by the things that you do in your daily life and the way that you live and the things that you say. Remember what you say out of your mouth and how you speak. If you catch yourself, clear it up. God, please forgive me. I didn't mean that. Catch that thing before the devil comes and sweep it up. Catch it now. If you got to catch it in the head, catch it. Lord, ooh, that I didn't mean that. That, that mm, 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 I don't know how I said that. Catch it and clear it. And if you do do something wrong, don't dwell on it because that's just going to open up a door. Go to the Lord. Daddy, please forgive me. You know, I know that I've sinned. And if it's your body, because your body is not yours, your body is his. If it's something that you sinned against your body, which would be fornication, sexual out of marriage, lust, and all that kind of stuff, that's, that's, that, that's pertaining to his, his body. Daddy, I've sinned against only you and you alone have I sinned. That's what his word says because that's his body. Please forgive me. And then try not to do it no more. I mean, we all have, we all have done it. We do stuff and we we'll repent for it and we we'll go back and do the same thing again. That means you didn't you didn't mean it in the first place. When you, if you go back, keep doing it. You know what I mean? It might be hard, but just try. Just try not to do it. You know, and, and you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. If you're asking Him and you're saying, Lord, please forgive me. You know, give me strength. He's going to strengthen you to see it through. And believe you me when I tell you, the Holy Ghost is a keeper. He'll keep you now. He'll keep you if you, if you want to be kept. Anybody have anything to say? Okay, well, we have some visitors. Can you visitors please stand up and announce themselves and say who they are? And <laughs> they take it from there. Go on now. Don't everybody stand up at once. Um, well, uh, my name is Sylvester Jenkins. I'm 